Howdy, everyone. Kevin with Wildlife Revealed here. And Tristan. And Tristan. And we're back with another episode for you. It's called A Clutter of Spiders. That's right. A group of spiders is known as a clutter or a cluster. I like clutter better. I know you do. I've seen your room. So as soon as we show up, I take just a few seconds to get my camera and stuff ready. Turn around, my son's gone. Where do I find him? Going straight up into this giant tree house. So being a responsible father, I'll go and get him. I have to admit, it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty sweet tree house, complete with zip line, trap doors to get in. And a third story. That's right, we're going up. I found a good spot in a tree, complete with a zip line and everything. Go ahead. Tristan here with Wildlife Revealed, and today we're going to be looking at spiders. So this is the reason we came over here. A friend of mine found this giant brown recluse in some of her camping gear. Take a look at the abdomen there, see how swollen it is. That's because it's probably gravid, meaning full of all kinds of spider eggs waiting to make its egg sac. But also, you can notice on its back there what looks sort of like a fiddle with the neck of it pointing towards the abdomen. They're sometimes called fiddleback spiders. This is indeed a brown recluse. Now, there are lots of spiders that have a similar pattern on them. The most certain way to tell it's a brown recluse is brown recluse have six eyes on them, whereas other spiders will have eight. So, you know, if you need to figure it out for sure, just pop in there and count the number of eyeballs. The brown recluse has a hemotoxic venom, which destroys blood cells and tissues and can actually cause pretty nasty bites of necrosing or dying tissue. And anytime you see what looks like to be a really nasty dead spot. It's probably a spider bite and most likely a brown recluse. However, their fangs are too small to penetrate most fabrics. So at least there's a plus. And she was actually stung by a wasp and paralyzed. They found her realized she was alive, but couldn't actually move. And so let's see here. And this is a native tarantula, Texas. People don't realize that we have tarantulas right here in Texas. So what do you think? Should I try to pick her up? Let's see if I can just get her to walk up on my hand here. Right up here. Come on. Go right up. Climb up onto my hand. There you go. There you go, girl. There we are. You're not quite on my hand, are you? <laughs> you don't want to be on your hand. Well, I'm trying to be real gentle since this is a tarantula that hasn't been handled. You're not accustomed to being picked up. The ones that I used to keep all the time, I would mess with quite a bit. So, there we go. This is a Texas brown tarantula. A lot of people don't realize that tarantulas are native to Texas. And unfortunately, they're on the decline because of pesticides. It's one thing, and just simply getting run over and stepped on. People see a spider and they destroy it. They're afraid of it. So tarantulas like this are great. They can actually catch and eat rather large critters, including small mice, but all kinds of other insects. And this one we know is a female. Uh, because the males, when they get to be this size, they have little hooks on the back of their knees. And the hooks are there for, well, breeding purposes is the easiest way to explain it. And so that way we know this one is a female. And if you look real close at her abdomen, all kinds of little hairs on her bottom there. See, those little hairs actually act as a defense. When they're threatened, if an animal comes from above, they might take their rear feet and flick the little hairs off of their bottom. And the hairs are really itchy. They're like getting fiberglass in your skin. As a matter of fact, the old joke shops from the 50s used to sell itching powder. Itching powder was actually made out of the hairs off of a tarantula. 
Unfortunately, that led to people hunting tarantulas by the thousands just to get enough hair to fill little bitty envelopes. And something else tarantulas might do is spit a little bit of web fluid and flick that with their feet. Uh, the web fluid, if it gets in the eyes of a bird or a small mammal, can actually blind them and irritate it rather severely. And very rarely do they bite. They use those fangs primarily to eat. They'll take the fangs and inject basically their saliva into the animal, like the cricket or other animal, and digest it from the inside out. Then they simply suck up all the juices. I find it rather amusing. I need a picture of my assistant here. He has our tarantula safety gear in his hand, like a paper to put under it and a bowl to put on top. Yep. I take it that the tarantula has made an escape more than once? No. No, not yet, but you're just, you're I don't prepared. Trust him. You don't trust him. <laughs> but this is actually a decent size. And here in a minute, I don't know if you can really see the fangs on the front of there. Now, if the tarantula were to bite me, it's not really the venom that would be painful. It's just the fact that they're really big, like the tip of a pencil stabbing into your skin. And we have a molt that I can show you the size of those fangs here in a moment. And tarantulas, whenever they molt, they actually turn upside down and split their, uh, their exoskeleton open and crawl out of it. And so if you see a tarantula that's upside down with legs up, he's molting. When they die, they usually die right side up and usually the legs curl under. So I'll show you a molt here in a second, see what the inside of a tarantula looks like too. But this little girl's being very well behaved, so I'm going to set her back in here. And oh, by the way, I found out just a moment ago, the tarantula has an accidental roommate. Inside this log, there's a New American wood cockroach. It's up on the top. I don't know if you can really see in there to see that cockroach. So the tarantula has a roommate. <laughs> so she's been good. Let's put her right back in here. Ready to go back in? Probably. Usually when you set them down, they're ready to go to familiar territory. There you go, girl. Ooh, she's happy. Oh, she's moving. She's happy. So this is actually the molt of that tarantula, who, by the way, the tarantula's name is Cupcake. And I told that to several people, and nobody seems to think that that is a, uh, uh, makes the tarantula any more attractive, but I don't know if it's coming showing up. There we go. This is the molt. So can you see the fangs right there? They're pretty good size. They're almost the size of a pencil lead or at least a small finishing nail. But all those are vessels for them to be able to inject the venom, which is essentially their saliva to digest it. So let's turn this guy over. And so the tarantula, when they molt, the top of their body there kind of opens like a little secret hatch, and they actually have to sort of crawl out of it, and they pull each one of those legs through those holes. You can see down there how they all connect, even their fangs, and the other thing that has to molt out, the inside of their stomach, as a matter of fact, has to molt as well and come out. All right, and here we go. There's a little trap door. Oops. Really light and fragile, so there is a trap door right there that came off of the top. But again, I just like looking at the big powerful fangs. Let's see, get back down here so we can zoom in. If we can see those fangs or not. Now see, she's flipped over on her back. And what she's trying to do is unhinge that little trap door so she can start climbing out of her old exoskeleton. You see her constantly flexing her legs, trying to work them further and further out. Now she has the trap door open. She's managed to start pulling herself out of the old exoskeleton. See how she's starting to slide out. However, she still has all her legs up inside the old exoskeleton. Has to free those next. Now you can see how she's got much more of her body out and the chalice array, which are sort of the little arms that the fangs are attached to. And her head seems to be out 
as well. And she's starting to slide those legs out. And she seems to have her abdomen most of the way out and her legs a good way out of the exoskeleton as well. But she still is moving some of those legs, which means there's plenty of her legs still up inside. So she's got to free all of that yet. Now she's got her legs almost all the way out. The coolest part, look at those white fangs there. They're white because the new exoskeleton has not hardened yet. You can see the fangs and most of her legs, she's almost there, has to kick that old exoskeleton away. And there she is, completely free of the old exoskeleton. Her new exoskeleton is still soft, has to dry off, and she's probably exhausted. You can see her flexing all her new joints. So, success! Dad, come here! Black Widow Spider! A what? Black Widow! Where's it at? Right down there. Oh, that is a beast. Let me see this flashlight. Is a very large black widow spider. Black widows are venomous, however, they're not as dangerous as people might think. They do have a neurotoxin. It's a nasty bite, but people don't really usually die from spider bites from a black widow. And I found a really big black widow spider and an egg sac down there as well. Widow spiders get their name from the fact they are known to kill and eat their mates. And male black widow spiders, it's been discovered they'll actually test the web, taste the web of the female. And if they don't sense the saliva, from them eating, then the males will not mate with the females. And that way, saving their own life. You see that big swollen abdomen, but also the little red hourglass on her bottom. This is a very large black widow spider here. Now, black widow spiders aren't as aggressive as people might think. In fact, one of their first go-tos is if you startle them, Let's see if I touch her web. They like to play dead. See how they curl their legs up? Oh, she went and hid. I have a little black widow egg sack right here. It's more than likely filled with tons of little bitty black widow spiders. This is kind of funny. The little toad house here had someone else move in. We found another black widow spider up under here. Let me see. We found the web here. Let's see where she is. That's a little girl. Oh there's, oh, there's a shed. There's a molt in there. There's a little one way up in there. Oh no, that's, that might be, that's a different spider. Oh, there's a female. Way up in there. Hey like Tristan, I held the other ones. Your turn. No, uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Let's see here. All right, down in there. Where is here? Oh, but she actually, do you see that? She put wet, spit the web fluid. You see that little, that's just one of the things that she did to scare us. You know, she's trying to run. The crazy thing is, I set this Black Widow up with some substrate, and not quite two days later, 
she had made a web and started laying her eggs. And you can see that pink bundle there. She keeps sticking eggs in what is basically a little bubble made out of silk. You see the little white that she put on the top. Well, then the crazy thing is she takes it and now she's wrapping it all up. You see her back feet. She takes a little bit of silk from her spinneret and she's basically wrapping it up to make it in a nice tight little package to protect all of those hundreds of little black widow spider eggs. Pretty cool, huh? Now, after more than a couple hours work, you can see how she has the egg sac completely encased, yet she's still dabbing more and more silk on it to make sure it's as protected as can be. It's crazy to think not only all those eggs, but also all that silk fit inside that spider's body. Diligently working still. Everybody like and subscribe and share this video with all the people you know.